Hello and welcome to another episode of 805 Inspires. During this time of COVID, we've been exploring some of the museums and cultural centers around Santa Barbara County. And today, we get a fascinating journey into the Wolf Museum of Exploration and Innovation, known to you and I as Moxie here in Santa Barbara. Um, so thank you for, again for joining us for this episode of 805 Inspires. So Moxie is relatively new, at least the physical facilities here in Santa Barbara. Can you tell us a little bit about how Moxie came to be? Absolutely, I'm happy to. So the Moxie that we know and love today actually began as a dream, gosh, almost 30 years ago. Around 1990, we were incorporated as the Children's Museum of Santa Barbara by a group of incredibly dedicated and passionate community volunteers who spent all of those many years fundraising, scouting out locations for the museum, um, you know, working with different designers and builders and planners to finally open the Moxie that we know and love in 2017. Wow, I had no idea you were founded that long ago. What was the tipping point for making that happen? Well, we had two pretty pivotal moments in the history of Moxie. Uh, the first was getting this parcel of land that we're on right now from the city. Um, we're at 125 State Street, which turned out to be a phenomenal location for us. We're adjacent to the train station and we're in the funk zone, which you know has really taken off over the past few years um, as a you know hot new area. We're two blocks from the beach, which you can see from our beautiful rooftop. So we were very fortunate to finally get this um, particular location for the museum. And then the other pivotal moment for us was really when our naming benefactors, Dick and Noel Wolf, came in with a significant gift to our capital campaign that really catalyzed the project and you know, got us kind of into that final stretch that we needed to realize uh, this dream that had started so long ago. Uh, Robin, you mentioned the naming of benefactors. That's something I've always been curious about. Moxie, your name, and where did that come from? Well, Moxie's full name is Moxie the Wolf Museum of Exploration and Innovation, uh, named in part to honor our, our benefactors. But Moxie, M-O-X-I, is actually an acronym for the Museum of Exploration and Innovation. It's also a play on the word Moxie, M-O-X-I-E, which is sort of that can-do spirit and attitude that uh, certainly the Moxie staff have a lot of, and also that, that attitude that we hope to instill in all of the children and families who walk through our doors. Wow, that's really cool. I'm not sure I'd realize the implications of your name before. You had touched on it a little bit, but what is your mission statement, and what do you think is important for this community? Mm. Well, our mission is to ignite learning through interactive experiences in science and creativity. So we do that through um, STEAM, which is science, technology, engineering, arts, and math. We have open-ended exhibits that are really learner-driven, which means that as guests come in here, that they are able to explore their own curiosities, they're able to use skills that they already have while they're also acquiring new skills, using tools and technology in ways that they might not have imagined before, and that is so necessary to building a future generation of critical thinkers, creative problem solvers, basically the generation that will run the world in you know, a few short years to be interested and engaged in science and technology, um, to have an understanding and appreciation for how science is a part of our world and, and how the world works. And as I mentioned, having those critical thinking and problem solving skills that will be so necessary to meet the challenges of today and of the future. That is a pretty big undertaking. I understand you've also worked uh, at other museums. What do you think sets the Moxie apart from these other museums? Well, again, I, I mentioned that Moxie is a very open-ended place. And what that means is that although we have exhibits and we have programs that focus on um, science and technology, science and technology and engineering, this is really a place where it's more about discovering the process of scientific thinking and engineering design, more so than it is about memorizing the facts and figures and formulas of science and math. So, you know, guests can come in here and they can, you know, tinker with some different exhibits. They can experiment and observe and, and try to make something work in a different way. They can build their own confidence in being a creative thinker and a problem solver. And really, that's a great opportunity to have that here. STEM education is needed now more than ever, and Moxie is a place where everyone has the ability to do that. And can you tell the viewers out there, what is your favorite part about working at Moxie? 
everything. Uh, we have an incredible staff here. We have a beautiful building that we get to come to every day. And also uh, we have guests who come through our doors and have smiles and have those aha moments that are so amazing to watch. When I you know, watch children discover how to make the fastest race car um, at Build It, Test It, Race It, or as I'm watching um, you know, a toddler push her scarf into the wind columns and then it goes flying through the air, um, almost by magic, but we know that it's the power of air. Or watching adults uh, challenge each other at mind ball and they're really concentrating and trying to see who can move the ball just by using their brain waves. And you know, at the end they, they high five each other and have a great time. So all of those just fill my heart with joy to see every day. But also I'm really excited about our commitment to accessibility and inclusion. We have a lot of programs where we um, work with community members to reduce some of the financial barriers that might prohibit them from coming to the museum. Uh, we also work with a lot of groups, um, you know, children and families with autism spectrum disorder and sensory processing issues. So we're really trying to do a lot to be a museum for all where everyone feels welcome and feels like Moxie is a place for them. Well, thank you. Um... Can you tell us a little bit maybe about your favorite exhibit? Oh, well, how do I choose just one? There's so many amazing ones. I would say though that uh, Roll It Wall is probably my favorite. So Roll It is where you build a roller coaster track and um, we've got you know, pieces of track and pegs and then also balls of different uh, densities and weights so that you can experiment with uh, you know, which ball will go the fastest. You can build uh, you know, different number of loops, bigger loops. Um, you can have jumps in the track. And it's also an exhibit that is so inviting to guests of all ages. So I've seen you know, a, a toddler walk around collecting the balls and putting them into the steel bucket. Um, she may be categorizing, she may be counting those, um, but she's also getting the satisfaction of hearing that plunk when it falls in the steel bucket. Then I see older kids who are there and are really observing how the ball is going down the track. They're seeing where it stops, they're seeing where it might fall off, and they're figuring out those problems of how they can make that track more successful. And then I see adults who are there who come in with just that goal and that kind of self-identified challenge of, I'm gonna make the biggest, you know, most impressive track that I can. And they do, I mean, we've seen a track built on the roll it wall um, with 40 loops in it. Wow, thank you, I can't wait to come see it. Also, what makes you excited uh, on a day-to-day -day basis, the work and the work you do at the museum? Again, it's so many things. It, it's those aha moments when kids recognize that they, uh, that they have the curiosity and that they have the tools and the skills needed to explore and discover. Maybe they hadn't seen themselves as scientists before, but they can come here and they can, they can discover these different scientific principles or they can explore and experiment with some of the different materials. And all of a sudden they can picture themselves um, as potential future scientists, engineers, mathematicians. And that's really exciting to see that we can spark that kind of lifelong interest and appreciation for science that might lead to a career choice, um, might lead to a passion. And, you know, this is the place where that can happen. So the museum is really cool. Are there any inside secrets you can give to our audience and people watching? Uh, maybe some of the things uh, the guests have not noticed when they visited the first time? So insider secrets about Moxie. Well, we do have a lot of little hidden Easter eggs around the museum. We're very playful staff here. Um, but one of the things that uh, a lot of guests don't notice right away is actually right up here above me. One of the exposed beams here on the second floor. All of the people who were part of constructing this building from Armstrong Associates, to AB Design Studios, to the staff and the board members and the volunteers who were part of that. Um, everybody signed their name on that beam. And so it's really great for community members to be able to come in here and see their name or to see the name of someone who was so integral to the opening and the success of the museum. Wow, thank you. I'm gonna to have to keep an eye out for that the next time I visit. Uh, thank you so much for your time, Robin. Um, next, we're gonna talk with another member of MOXIE, uh, the curriculum specialist, Tara, who helped develop many of Moxie's educational programs. Welcome, Tara. Hi, thank you so much for having me. Tara, thank you so much for joining me. To begin with, can you tell me a little bit about your role and your maybe the day-to-day -day activities you do at the Moxie Museum? Totally. So my job title is Curriculum Specialist, 
and that means that I'm a member of the education team and I help develop the content that is delivered in a number of our programs. So I do lots of research on programs and activities. I test out materials and projects that we can do in camps, in our makerspace, on the floor of the museum. Uh, and then I write down how we're gonna do it and how we're going to provide those that programming to our guests and visitors. So uh, it's a lot of fun. I get to be very creative in my job. And I also get to spend lots of time with kids and families visiting the museum, which brings it full circle. So you have a variety of educational programs. Can you tell the watchers at home a little bit about uh, the programs that Moxie puts on throughout the year? Absolutely. So. Of course, MOXIE aims to be a place for all to have interactive experiences in science and creativity, and our program offerings certainly reflect that ambition. So for the youngest visitors, we offer a toddler program where we provide developmentally appropriate STEAM activities, so science, technology, engineering, art, and math. Um, beyond that, we offer lots of school-aged programs, so field trips are available during the school year, and summer camps are offered for grades one through six in the summertime. We also do a sensory friendly morning where guests who might otherwise not be able to visit the museum because of sensory processing challenges or autism spectrum disorder, uh, we modify the museum and make it more comfortable for them to visit us. Uh, beyond that, another one of our programs that's been a big project for me is a project that's funded by the National Science Foundation we are working on developing engineering curriculum for field trip programs that are supplemented with classroom curriculum that teachers can implement in their classrooms before they visit the museum. And this is really a great way for us to uh, integrate with the larger, larger educational environment in Santa Barbara and beyond, which has been a real pleasure to work on. Well, that's great to have so many programs for young people. Uh, but what about some of the adults, people in my demographic? Uh, does Moxie provide any educational or resources for adults? <laughs> That's a great question. I'm so glad you asked. Um, it's one of my favorite things that we offer, in fact, is our series of happy hours and after parties. So on designated days, we open the museum to the 21 plus crowd and bring in a DJ and music, special programming every once in a while, as well as a bar. Uh, and we open the museum to adults while the kids are not around. And it's really fun to have that audience here. I love seeing adults playing with the exhibits, getting hands-on, enjoying time with their friends and being in this space. Um, and as special as those nights are, it's a really great reminder that this is a place for all folks to come and engage in playful exploration. Great. Well, you mentioned playful exploration and, and around the exhibit, uh, which is what I found the times I've been in there. Um, what does that mean and how does that set a typical visit apart uh, from other museums or other educational institutes, the uh, playful exploration. Yeah, uh, playful exploration is, is kind of a big phrase in the education sphere, um, but that really explains a lot of how we do science learning at MOXIE. When you come into the exhibits, there aren't a lot of instructions, there won't be signs telling you what to do, and that is very much on purpose. We hope that guests come into the museum and bring in their own perspective and follow their own curiosity to try things out, uh, test their ideas, encounter failure, and solve problems. Um, we find that when there aren't instructions or there aren't requirements on how you're supposed to do something or what the right answer is, we discover so many more possibilities. So, Playful exploration is just one of the ways in which we help guests engage, discover, solve problems, work together, and really get involved in the, the processes and the mindset of science and engineering. So we hope that guests can come in and follow their own curiosity, um, try new things, and, and carry that mindset with them throughout the museum. It is interesting to think about the mindset uh, being a part of science. Uh, where else do you see the MOXIE mindset in action? And, and how can viewers explore the MOXIE mindset for themselves? Yeah, it's interesting to think about a mindset. It's kind of an abstract thing where we typically think about science being something that happens in a lab with 
high-tech equipment and a lab coat, but it, it really is something that um, can happen everywhere, anytime, where you're asking questions and trying new things. And one of the places where we see that happen frequently is in our innovation workshop, which is actually where I'm sitting right now. This is our maker space, and in this room we have lots of tools and materials that guests can use to make and create different things. We want people to visit the innovation workshop and learn a new skill or try a new activity that will allow them to express themselves and get creative. So not only is it a, an outlet for creativity, but it's a way that we can encourage problem solving and uh, really embracing challenge and, and persisting to make something uniquely yourself, uniquely your own, as it were. So we see examples all the time. One activity we do involves some electronics where we use LED light bulbs and coin cell batteries to make digital light up pieces of wearable art. So barrettes, pins, uh, keychains, whatever it is that sparks your curiosity and gets your mind going, we have all sorts of materials, but sometimes the lights can be a little tricky and they don't always work the first time and don't always do what you want them to do. Um, so I remember a particular instance of working with a girl who visited us who couldn't get the light to stay on, uh, couldn't quite solve the problem, but we were able to work together, make some observations about what was working and what wasn't, uh, ask other people for their ideas and, and see if there, were, there was inspiration sitting just beside us, and then try some different things, test things out experiment a little bit and, and find the right solution that was going to bring her vision to life and also encourage that flexibility towards problem solving, um, which is so important in science, is critical in engineering and is something that can happen while you're doing a hands-on craft, making something at home, even something as mundane as trying a new recipe. So you can really use that mindset anywhere and in any situation where there's a problem to be solved. Sounds great. I'm feeling inspired just thinking about what is possible with that frame of mind and the moxie and beyond. Uh, now, one of the things we're doing with 805 Inspires is providing an activity at the end of this program. So Tara is going to show us an activity that you can do at home to practice the moxie mindset. Hi, everyone. We are back in the innovation workshop, Moxie's Makerspace. And I'm here today to share an activity that you can try at home to get hands-on with some tools and materials and express your creativity using that Moxie mindset that is all about exploring and innovating and getting creative. So one of our favorites here in the makerspace is called string art. And this is a technique that is accessible for a range of ages. Um, a, a range of materials are used in this project. And it's a really great starting point for creating something fun and unique that is uh, customized and created just, just by you. So um, we're gonna start by sharing some of the materials and then I'll show you the process. So we have two options to make string art. One technique is to use cardboard as the base. Um, it's similar to embroidery where you use string and a needle to uh, thread colored string through a design that you impress into a piece of cardboard. So that's one technique. Another is to use a wood block and you can use wood materials that you buy at the hardware store, um, scrap wood that you have from other projects at home, as well as a hammer and nails to create the pattern that you want to fill in with colorful string. So the materials, if you want to work with cardboard, you're gonna want a pencil, some paper, a tool that can poke through the cardboard. We use what's called an awl. You might also use a needle or um, a sharp nail. Of course, we encourage adult supervision with these tools, um, as well as needle and thread to fill in with the string. And then if you're going to go the route of the wood block string art, a piece of flat wood uh, that is sanded down and, and smooth to the touch, wire nails. I usually use three quarter to one inch nails, uh, a hammer, and a surface that is safe for hammering on. Um, and what else? Colorful string, again, paper and pencil to plan your design, and that will get you started when you are creating your own piece of string art. So we're gonna transition and get started on the process of planning a design, 
Uh, and today I'm thinking I'm going to make a uh, hmm, seasonal celestial design. I was thinking about a crescent moon shape. So we always want to start by planning our creation so we know where we're headed in the process, so we can anticipate challenges, know where we might get stuck and try to solve for problems as we go. So the first thing I'm gonna do is draw the design that I'm imagining, and this will be for my cardboard piece of string art. So I'll do a quick sketch and then we will move into the next step uh, and I'll catch you there when I have my sketch finished and ready to go. All right, so I've created a sketch of the design I want to make on my cardboard piece of string art. And the next step is to transfer this design onto the cardboard so I know where to fill in the pattern. So using the all tool or another, another device that can safely poke through cardboard, I'm going to lay my design over the piece of cardboard and then use this tool to mark the, the points or the intersections where I will thread string through. Of course, be extra careful about where your fingers are behind the piece of cardboard. Um, sometimes these tools are sharp and we want to make sure everyone is making safely all the time. All right, so I'm working on finishing off the holes in my cardboard string art base and one of the variables that you can actually experiment with in string art is how many points and intersections you create in the design and that might uh, create some interesting and different effects as you experiment with this technique so just wrapping up with my strings i'm going to make a little star on the corner and when i pull away the sketch we'll see we'll see what this this step in the process looks like All right, oh man. So interesting thing about this, when you move between the design phase and the planning and then this intermediate phase, it looks a little chaotic, but that's part of the magic is that we get to transform it back into the or original design. So now I'm gonna take a needle that I've threaded with some embroidery floss. You can use yarn, any um, relatively thin string that you have. I'm gonna tape the, the end of the string to the back and begin threading between all of the points that I've created in that last step of the process. And we'll see what patterns and geometries emerge. And as you go, you can uh, zigzag across the holes randomly. You can find a systematic pattern. Uh, some designs just feature a border that's sketched of the, not sketched, but sewn uh, around the edge of the, the primary shapes. But I'm gonna go for a, a filled in look this time and try to fill in the positive space of the, the crescent moon shape that I've crafted. Just getting started threading my uh, crescent moon string art on this piece of cardboard. And uh, the more holes I've created, the, the longer this is gonna take. So I'm gonna set this to the side for now and come back to this project a little bit later. But just to give you an idea, here's the same design that I started earlier. It's moved a little further along. Uh, I still would like to add more details, but an even more complete piece like this one and and this design give you an idea of what's possible with this process. So here's some inspiration. We'll come back to that design and let's explore the other materials and tools that we can use for string art. So the next process we're gonna try out is making string art on a wood block. This is an example of a finished piece. We've used this sanded wood, a hammer and nails to create the design and then filled it in with colorful string. It's very similar to the cardboard process where we're gonna begin by drawing out a plan, marking the drawing on the piece of wood, and then continuing on with the real hand tools of a hammer and nails to then fill in the design. 
So I'm going to start, I'm going to create a piece of string art that is my initial, the letter T. I've created this uh, plan and I will mark this again on my wood piece before I get into the real work of the hammer and nails. Again, using the awl as a tool to mark the wood. If you choose a soft wood like, like plywood, uh, it's really easy to make just, just gentle indentations so you know where to work in the next step. Again, being careful with these tools. If you have real tools at home, you can also use the wire nails that you're going to be using later on to just make gentle marks or you can even mark directly on the wood with a pencil or another writing tool. So now I've got the, the points of my letter T marked out and I'm gonna move over to my hammer and nail station to do the next step. All right, so I am ready to continue adding nails to my initial string art um, and making the letter T. Looks like a little bit of a jumble right now, but the pattern will come out when we add the color. So I'm going to continue adding nails to the last few points on my string art, uh, being extra careful using real nails and a hammer. We want to make sure we don't pinch any fingers or damage anything in our workspace. So one of my favorite techniques is to use a hammer and especially if we're working with kids, instruct them to use tiny taps. So I'm pinching the nail with my first finger and my thumb and then taking tiny taps with the hammer to get started. Working with hand tools like a hammer is a really great way to get young kids involved with making. These are fundamental tools that we can use for all sorts of projects. So long as we're careful with them. Oop. Got two more pieces to put in. And once we finish this, we'll get to choose the color that we use to fill in our string art. And there we go. We're practically there and now I'm gonna choose a color to fill in a crazy design of colorful string. So back with my string over here, um, one other thing that we can experiment with in string art is combining colors and making a pattern. I think one, one thing I want to try today is making a border out of one color of string and then filling it in with a different color. So we're gonna experiment a little bit with that. But um, pro probably one of the trickiest parts of getting started is tying a knot getting your string connected to that first nail. This is something that especially young children might need assistance with if they don't have those fine motor skills yet. Totally okay. But once you get that tightened on, it's just a matter, a matter of connecting all the dots. And the cool thing about string art is it is similar to a lot of other accessible activities like connect the dots or uh, you know, patterns like constellations or uh, doing work with geometry and, and shapes and patterns. And there's a lot of ways we can talk about math, learning, especially for young kids using this as a medium and a platform to explore those ideas. So as I go, not a lot of rhyme or reason here just making this border design and then getting ready to tie off the last one. And I already made a, a rookie mistake. I left too short of a tail on the end, so it'll be a little tricky to tie it off, but I think we can manage. And once you tie it off, you can move on to another color or call it a day. That's one of the cool things about making is that you can always add something more, try something different, go back to the drawing board, uh, take what you've learned from the first version and apply it to a next one. Um, but we'll see, I, I might add some more color still, might let it sit for a little bit, think on it, let my creative juices flow, um, and think about what I would wanna make next. I hope that this is a process that you can try at home, use some of the materials you have around your house, uh, make a 
small trip to the hardware store, pick up some tools and materials that might be a new experience for you and your family. But this is a really fun process, really great activity for kids of all, of all ages um, to express their creativity and, and get their hands on some real tools and materials. Well, what a fascinating look inside the, uh, one of Santa Barbara's newest museums, the Moxie. I hope you enjoyed this uh, episode of 805 Inspires. My name's Eric Davis, and we'll see you next time.